Joining us now, Lucy Fraser. Hi, it's good to Hi. see you. Thanks for joining us on the programme. I don't know if you just heard Dave Whelan from As the ASLEF, the Train Drivers Union, uh, saying they are prepared to strike for 20 years, if necessary, until this government or future government comes to the table and gives them what they want. Well, I think it's really disappointing because I think the government um, is uh, helping facilitate uh, discussions. Uh, we are, of course, in a cost of living crisis where we need to keep inflation down. That means we need to control public spending. Um, train drivers get on average around £60,000. Um, and I do think it's important that they come to the table so that they don't disrupt the journeys of thousands, millions of people across the country. Of course, it's, it's slightly different with public spending and, and train drivers, isn't it? But um, do you think that train drivers are paid enough money at the moment? Is that what you're saying? Well, as I'm saying, you know, it's important that they come to the table to uh, discuss uh, the right solution. They so say they are. They say it's the fact that the Transport Secretary is not even bothered to talk to them for six months. Uh, well, I know that the Transport Secretary um, and the Rail Minister have had a number of conversations and, of course, uh, they facilitate those discussions, um, as you say. Um, but train drivers, on average, are paid around £60,000. Mm. And is that enough? Well, that's a matter uh, for, for the unions and uh, those employing the train drivers. But, uh, of course, I, I suspect many people around the country would think that £60,000 was, was quite a lot of money. Sounds as though you do as well. Well, I'm not involved, obviously, in those uh, discussions. I'm the Culture Secretary. But I know that the Secretary of State for Transport and the Rail Minister have had a number of discussions and are very keen to make sure that people across the country can go around their daily business. It's chilling, though, isn't it, to think that we could have disruption for 20 years on the railway? Well, what we've seen post-COVID is, of course, that people aren't necessarily returning to journeys on the train. Um, and the government has subsidised quite a lot of train journeys. Um, and I think it's really important that we make sure that we uh, get those trains back up and running. Um, talk to me about the uh, Competition and Markets Authority, who will be reporting a little bit later on. Um, the thought is that it's likely to prove that we're being ripped off by supermarkets when it comes to buying petrol? Um, well, that's why the uh, uh, Chancellor recently called in all the regulators to discuss whether they were passing on um, the uh, cost of living issues to their customers, because it is a concern, not just in relation to petrol, but across the board. We want to make sure uh, that when prices uh, do come down, that those are passed on to customers. And the Chancellor had a meeting with a number of regulators over the course of the last week. So what's your message to supermarkets this morning? Uh, it is really important that they pass on those uh, reductions to customers because I know people are feeling the squeeze at the moment with the cost of living. Um, and it's important that when prices come down, consumers feel that as well. And what's your message to consumers who feel that they are being ripped off by these supermarkets that are basically profiteering? They would use a different word, but let's call it what it is. Well, of course, we have seen um, high food inflation, and that's across the globe. Uh, so we've seen it here, but we've seen it in uh, other countries in Europe and indeed uh, more widely than that. But it is really important, as you say, that those prices are... Are you going to force them to do that? Well, as I said, the Chancellor called in a number of regulators uh, last week uh, because it's for the regulators to look at this. He called them in uh, and he made his position very clear, and I hope that the... Regulators will be having uh, those conversations uh, with the supermarkets as well. And the government basically saying, yes, we would like you to bring those prices down. And if you don't, then we're going to look at ways of forcing you to do that. Well, you will remember as well when um, petrol was, when the reductions in petrol uh, uh, came in uh, and, and should have been passed on to consumers earlier last year. You'll remember the Chancellor then uh, uh, also wrote to all uh, those companies who were should have brought those prices down. So, of course, government keeps an eye on this and we want to ensure that we look after uh, customers. And we are taking action uh, as a government as well, so obviously supporting people with the cost of living, uh, paying um, at least uh, half the typical uh, bill, £3,500, to keep those energy prices low. OK, uh, you've got a plan um, to tackle antisocial behaviour over the summer. Tell me about it. Uh, so what we're announcing today is £3 million uh, to go to uh, provide activities for young people over the summer. Like what? 
Well, that could be education, art, drama. What we know is that young people, if they don't have things to do, they go down the wrong path, not the right one. So we're giving them something to do and something somewhere to go. So we're renouncing three million pounds uh, over the course of the summer to enable people to have a constructive summer, uh, not a uh, not a. Um, one that's going to affect other people's lives in terms of antisocial behaviour. Who do you think is most responsible for tackling teenagers' antisocial behaviour? I mean, we've seen what's been happening in France over the last week. President Macron uh, appealing to mothers and fathers to sort out antisocial behaviour. What role should a government have in that? I think government plays a role, parents play a role, communities play a role. I think it's holistic. Um, we are doing uh, a number of things to make sure that, as I said, we give children something to do and somewhere to go. So in my department, we're responsible uh, for sport and for youth clubs, and we've seen significant investment in those even since I was appointed in the last four months. So in the last four months, uh, we've refurbished a thousand, uh, we've announced that we've refurbished a thousand tennis courts over the course of the last year. Uh, we're building multi-sport pitches across the country. 1,600 we announced uh, just recently. Uh, we're putting investment into, into youth clubs as well. On Friday, we announced investment in swimming pools. So government plays a role in order to provide facilities for people. Um, we're absolutely taking up that baton. Um, but communities, parents, um, schools, everyone plays a role. What would the British government do to try to uh, resolve uh, six nights of rioting by teenagers that we've seen in France? How would you start to tackle something like that in this country? Uh, well, of course, that's a matter for the French. No, it's not, because I said it was in this country. Well, in this country, we are doing a number of things uh, to tackle uh, violent crime. In fact, crime has gone down overall by 50% yeah, including okay. violent crime in specific, this country because of the steps that the government We're talking specifically about teenagers rioting, setting things on fire, burning a vehicle and driving it towards a mayor's family's home where his wife breaks her leg getting the kids out of the house. I mean, the French are obviously not doing enough. How would you start to tackle something like that? Well, we have taken uh, quite a lot of action to reduce violent crime in this country, including putting sentences... I'm, not talking, about, I'm talking about rioting, specifically teenagers out of control. How would you deal with it? Well, in this country, I'm pleased we're, we're not seeing those things on the streets. Why do you think that is? Well, what we have done over... Uh, I've mentioned some of the action that we've taken in relation to ensuring that there's positive things for young people uh, to do. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, we are, we've also put significant amount of funds into... But there are issues with the race in this country. There are issues with police and race in this country, and yet we don't see teenagers trying to burn places down. Why do you think that is? Well, uh, if, if you just let me answer the well, question. I've, I've, let you, I've asked <laughs> you several we, times, you just haven't answered we've, me. we've put in significant funds in order to um, stop young people going down the wrong path. So I could point to a number of measures that we've put in place. Uh, one in the, in the youth justice space, so the Ministry of Justice has a three million, £300 million pound, uh, fund over the next three years to help support young people who are at risk of going down this path. The Home Office has the Youth Endowment Fund, £200 million, which particularly targets uh, young people in relation to um, serious violence, exploitation, uh, young children and girls so going down what, the wrong path. So that's what, so the what we are, are doing. Well, what we are doing... Is that I'm not French going to comment failing? on the French. Why not? Uh, what I'm going to say is what we are it's doing... Literally 20 miles away. What we are doing in this country is we have targeted action in order to support young people who might be going down the wrong path. And that's why we are announcing today the £3 million pounds to help already. people yeah. who, who, are on the, who might otherwise uh, not and I've have helpful to, activities. I've allowed summer. you to tell me about that. You're not worried at all about what's happening in France? Of course I'm worried about what's happening in France. Uh, of, of course I'm worried uh, for the French and for French people. And of course it's not helpful when there is unrest in countries uh, across the globe that sometimes feeds through into this country. But what I'm saying is that we understand we need to give people a positive, uh, give people positive activities here. We need to support young people and we need to help them not go down that path, which is why we're continuing to announce funds to support young people. OK, I'm almost out of time, but I just wanted to ask you quickly, Tamara's just reminded me, um, one of the ideas from this group of Conservative MPs who are um, launching their own immigration plan today, they, one of the ideas is to stop visas for care workers, really? Well, what they are saying is that we need to control immigration. And you will know 
uh, the significant steps the government is taking to control both illegal immigration and, on that and illegal immigration. Stopping visas for well, care workers? Well, what, uh, what we need to do is upskill people in this country to make sure that we do have sufficient workers um, who to, to, to provide services that we need. And you will know on Friday we announced the NHS workforce plan, which is going to significantly invest in our workforce here, both in order to retain staff um, and to recruit them, as well as employing, of course, um, uh, technical measures and taking advantage of technology to, in order to ensure that we look after people across the country. Okay, in sounds our like you support them. We must leave it there. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank, Thank you.